Hi, I'm Becky Stern, and today we're going to learn about soldering, or soldering, depending on where you're from. Soldering is the process of bonding separate metal objects together with a low melting point alloy. When done properly, this creates a secure electrical connection. It's not as hard as it may seem, and I'm going to show you everything you need to know. You'll also see soldering in crafts like stained glass and jewelry making, as well as construction, for example, sweating copper plumbing pipe. Today, we're just talking about small-scale electronic soldering. These are the tools you'll need. A soldering iron and solder, wire strippers, flush cutters, pliers or tweezers, eye protection, some kind of work holding tool, often called a third hand, a multimeter, some heat shrink tubing, and a heat gun or a lighter in a pinch. For fixing mistakes, either a solder pump or a solder wick can come in handy. The main idea is to heat up both things being soldered, like this wire and the leads of this LED, and allow the solder to flow between them. When heated properly, the solder will wick to the surfaces and the solder will look shiny and form concave shapes between components. If your components might undergo some stress, you can create a mechanically stronger bond by wrapping the wires together first before soldering. I should point out that there is an official NASA guide to soldering that goes way deeper than we will today. So if you get inspired, there's always more to learn. For our purposes, a rosin core solder, either with lead or lead-free, is ideal. See, the flux inside boils off as you solder, creating the ideal shielded environment for the metal bond to take place without oxidation. They do make solid solder with separate flux, though, which usually has to be washed off with alcohol afterwards. That's because, at the very least, it's ugly and sticky, and at the worst, it can absorb ambient moisture and corrode the components and the PCB. Rosin core solder and solder that's labeled no clean are just more convenient. Often you'll find it useful to tin your parts before you solder them, especially with things like stranded wire. Applying a little solder first can help you keep the strands together when you hook it up to a circuit board or the other wire you're working with. The tinned solder reflows when the joint is heated. If you're new to soldering, practice making a few simple circuits with LEDs and battery packs. Then you can level up to building a soldered version of your latest breadboard project on a piece of proto board. The most important rule of soldering is to heat up both parts. The ways it can go wrong are mostly related to incomplete heating of one part or the other. See, if the hot solder runs up against a cold part, it will cool down so quickly that some oxidation has a chance to form on the surface of the solder between it and the component. Here's what a cold solder joint looks like in a few different scenarios. But you can't always spot a cold solder with your eyes. You can check for proper connectivity by using the continuity function on your multimeter. No beep, no electrical flow. You can reheat the solder joint to correct a cold solder. You can also reheat your joint to undo the connection, which can be easier sometimes if the excess solder is first removed through wicking or suctioning it away. To protect your solder joints from shorting out against each other or nearby conductors, it is wise to use heat shrink tubing over any applicable solder joints. For splicing multi-wire cables, you can offset the joints and use multiple nesting sizes of heat shrink to tidy up and protect the entire thing. Once you've practiced soldering wires to each other, you might move on to try soldering wires to a circuit board. DigiKey's got a whole video about this topic, so check it out to learn more about soldering through whole components. Before we wrap up, I wanted to mention more advanced soldering methods so you can understand how this fits with other electronics you may encounter. The smaller the components, the harder they are to solder by hand. So for surface mount components, there's a robotic process that starts with a stencil to apply the paste solder, followed by a pick and place machine that puts down the parts, then a solder reflow oven that bakes the whole circuit to just the right temperature to allow the solder paste to liquefy and make all of the connections. 
Larger through-hole components can be attached by dipping the board in a solder bath and are still sometimes soldered by hand. To remove surface mount components, a hot air rework station can heat up the small pads that are inaccessible to a soldering iron. I've put some links to resources in the description, including other DigiKey articles and videos about soldering. If you've got some more insight and ideas, please leave them in the comments and we can all learn together. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll subscribe to catch the next videos in this introductory prototyping series.